We have breaking news. The Israeli military says it has found the bodies of three Israeli hostages in Gaza. News comes just hours after the U.S. built floating pier off the coast of Gaza became operational. Trucks of desperately needed aid started rolling into the territory for the first time today. The pier faced a slew of setbacks during its construction. The completion of the project coincides with significant restrictions on Gaza's border crossings and intense battles across the territory. Let's bring in CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Taya from Tel Aviv. So MTS, what more are we learning about these three Israeli hostages who were found in Gaza? Yeah, hi, Elaine. Well, in the last hour, uh, we heard from the Israeli military who announced that the remains of these three hostages who were killed uh, in the chaos of Hamas's brutal attack on the Nova Music Festival on October 8th, and the remains were then taken into Gaza. Well, the names of the three bodies that were covered uh, are, and uh, as follows, I have them here in front of me, is Shani Luke, Amit Buskila, and Itzhak Gelarenter. Uh, and as we've been saying, according to the Israeli military, their bodies were covered or recovered inside Gaza, but specifically in the Jabalia refugee camp, uh, an area which saw some of the most intense fighting after Israel uh, launched its invasion of Gaza, but in the last few weeks pulled out of that area only to return in the last few days or so uh, to fight against what's being described as a resurgent Hamas. Uh, but again, as we've been hearing from uh, the Israeli military, they have now found the remains of those three hostages who were taken into Gaza on October 7th. Um, Elaine. MTS, um, what can you tell us about this first wave of aid that's being delivered through the floating pier? Yeah, uh, after months, uh, months after President Biden announced the construction of this pier and after considerable delays, the pier anchored uh, off the coast of Gaza. And we've now seen the first truckloads of aids making it, aid rather making its way into the Gaza Strip. We understand that around 90 trucks of aid will start making its way into Gaza. That will increase up to 150 trucks a day, but it falls, falls far short rather of the 500 trucks needed every day to get the amount of aid and supplies needed into Gaza that was coming in before October 7th. And as we know, the humanitarian situation in Gaza is extremely dire. But I do want to point out that although the U.S. military uh, met, met, rather servicemen and women were heavily involved in the construction of the pier and the anchoring of it and will help uh, shepherd this aid, none of those servicemen and women will set foot inside Gaza. Instead, that aid will be delivered by the U.N.'s World Food Program to those who so desperately need it. Elaine. And MTS, the White House, we know, is working to get at least 20 American doctors out of Gaza after Israel closed the Rafah border crossing. You spoke with some of them. What did they have to tell you? That's right. Uh, we spoke with a few doctors who are at the European hospital in Khan Yunis, which is in the south of Gaza, just uh, not too far from Rafah, where Israel has been widening what it's describing as a limited operation in the last relative safe area of Gaza. And the doctors have been telling us that the situation they've encountered has been extremely dire. In fact, saying that in the intensive care unit uh, that they work in, not a single patient they've treated there has lived. And that is simply because they do not have the right resources they need in order to treat those patients. Now, one of the nurses that we spoke to, a nurse by the name of Monica Johnson from Portland, Oregon, um, she has been stuck in Gaza for a week longer than she had planned. She was supposed to leave uh, on Monday uh, and was on her way to a crossing to see if she could get out of Gaza. And she sent a, us a message. I'm going to read it to you very quickly. It says, we are currently waiting at the Israeli controlled border. It was a difficult passage. We had a tank pointing its barrel at us for exactly one hour before letting us through one of the checkpoints. We were so heartbroken to leave over half our team and the people of Gaza. I am so fearful for their safety. 
Now, Elaine, I can tell you that in the last few hours, we received a second message from Nurse Johnson, who again is from Portland, Oregon. She has now been able to cross outside of Gaza and will now be able to make her way home. Elaine. MTS, Taya, powerful reporting. MTS, thank you very much.